Alex, I found the greatest game ever. You must review it. Yeah, I can't really do that right now. Sort of busy. No, you're not. You're just creeping on Hillary's <laughs> Facebook. Alright, I'll do it. Alright, got the game all set up for you. Wait, what am I playing? <gasps> what the hell is Pocky and Rocky? Psh, I don't know, Pocky is some white mage or some shit, I don't know, but Rocky is a raccoon! A uh, raccoon, huh? So that had nothing to do with you picking this game or anything, right? No, why do we? Shh, it's just no. It's a coincidence. That's all. Jeez. All right, fine. Seeing a fellow raccoon in a game is it, 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 it interests me. So there. Shut up. Okay, going over the intro for this game is basic but stupid. There are these goblin things, and Pocky stopped them. I guess maybe that was covered in the last game. Hell if I know. The game doesn't really explain it too much. Then we see Rocky show up, who is a goblin as well. I always thought raccoons were mammals, but I guess they're goblins. Continuing with the story, and I use heavy quotes on that word, uh, Rocky decides to run away from the goblins because they get irritated one day, and decides to go and get help from Pocky, our uh, lead heroine. Good job, Rocky. You know, no one wants to deal with a cranky goblin. God only knows how ridiculous they can be. Or a ticked-off boo. Nah, seriously, look at the opening image again. Those ghosts look like boos with Princess Peach's panties on their heads. It's ridiculous, but awesome at the same time. I also have a small complaint about calling all these creatures goblins. You know, we can't call them creatures, monsters, demons. We have to call them goblins. Evidently, the creators of this game were just tired of using simple terminology for enemies. We get to call these ghosts, snakes, cyclops, and river frogs goblins. This is obviously just my speculation, of course, but still, it bothers me just a smidge. Just a smidge. No, but seriously, all nitpicking aside, the opening storyline is only one part of this game. I mean, eventually, further on, when you beat more levels, they reveal bits and pieces later about how the Black Mantle being the main villain, and how he's using the Gorgonzolas to try and help him take out the Nopino Goblins or something. But the storyline is really only a small part of a Super Nintendo game, and an action game at that, which is what this game should be. Uh, so, you know, we're going to see how it goes, and... We'll see what it all boils down to, because evidently it all comes down to the gameplay. The storyline can suck, but the gameplay can rock, and this game can sell. Yeah, I gotta tell you, bro, I'm not too impressed with this game so far. Hey, you're the one that said it's all about the gameplay. I mean, you can't really call any judgment on this game until you do that, am I right? Yeah, let's see this gameplay. <laughs> Holy balls! Well, hot damn, this game is kick ass! You have a couple basic controls. You can shoot quickly and rapidly by holding the Y button. Press the B button to counter most oncoming attacks. X allows you to perform a quick slide out of the way as well. Or you could use it to knock player 2 into a frenzy. Yeah, and the A button is pretty useless. It lets you shoot one projectile at a time, which is completely pointless because there's a button you can hold to shoot more, and it's no stronger than the other one, so it's not like it's a powerful attack. It's worthless. Don't press the button, just, just, just don't press the button. The shoulder buttons in Voca clear the entire screen attack. Uh, there's also an assortment of weapon upgrades besides that clear the screen bomb move. Uh, there are two types of weapons you can find and upgrade accordingly. The blue orbs upgrade your leaf or tarot card projectiles, depending on who you're playing as. The red orbs upgrade your fire projectiles. Careful though, because picking up a different projectile will overwrite the one you are currently using. I rarely came across this power-up, but there is a creature you can hop on and ride, and it's sort of like how the star power works for the Mario Brothers series. The only downside is it's kind of 
kind of difficult to control. Maybe I just suck with it, but it bounces around a lot, so it's really hard to, like, not fall off cliffs when you're using it. There are also some shield pickups you can find that obviously give you extra protection. Uh, sushi will give you more life and, you know, regain your health bar. Um, but holy crap, <laughs> this game is tough and it is very fast. I mean, it is ridiculously hard. I couldn't beat this game in one sitting. I will admit that straight front. This game is so hard. <laughs> Like, there's shit like this, like, you can't get out of the fuck, you! Ugh, it's ridiculous! When you run out of lives, though, you do get the option to continue at the beginning of the level endlessly, so you can try and fail as much as you want, but get over the fact that you can't save or use a password to load up a level. This game wants you to work your ass off endlessly to beat it in one go. I also came across a pretty severe glitch. There's a part where you're down in the caverns, and you, when you fall off and die, it respawns you in the middle of the hole so you die again. It's pretty much the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in a game. So you're here at the final section, you're the final hallway to get to the Black Mantle and take this all down and win the game and be the hero. Well, there is this spot where you fight a sub-boss right before you go into the door to fight Black Mantle, and it's the most ridiculous fight I've ever come across. This guy is hard, but it's okay, take a deep breath, because once you figure out how to beat him, he's really not that difficult, just kind of a long, tedious fight. Black Mantle, on the other hand, is holy fuck balls the most ridiculous, completely ridiculous boss I've ever fought. He's got this dark side force lightning attack that completely takes out an entire area, and it goes on for way too long. I could, you know, I could sit there trying to figure out how to beat him for like a couple weeks, but uh, hell with that noise. That's what YouTube's for, right? Let, let's see what YouTube's got to say. Alright, so after browsing around the gods of YouTube for a while, I found this guy, Senient Wolf, who apparently did a playthrough on this, and, you know what, let's see how he took out the final boss, because he shouldn't, you know, if you do a walkthrough, a playthrough, you should know what you're doing, so let's see what he's got. Seriously! Seriously! That's, that's, I just had to stand there! I just had to... I just... God, get, whatever. So after you stand there to avoid his lightning attack, you beat the game, you don't learn anything about his plans, because whatever, and the game's over, everyone's happy, the end. Hey, you found a hell of a fun game, Scooter. Not gonna lie. N n scooter? Hey, what you doing, buddy? Yeah, checking out what's going on in the world. But, uh, you know, what happened to reviewing the game? What is there even left to review? Oh, uh, the history of the game? Well, then I guess you better get looking on that Wikipedia. <laughs> I'll do that. I'll get this history shit done, don't you worry none. Alright, give me the history of Pocky and Rocky, oh, internet gods of Wikipedia. Yo, I got you covered, dog. Don't even sweat it none. Well, looks like history on this game takes us all the way back to the 1980s, where Japan was treated to this arcade classic, Kiki Kai Kai. Zero, whatever you want to call it. Or, we could just call it the Mysterious Ghost World. Ooh, so spooky. This game looks to be much like Pocky and Rocky in its format of shooting the opponents. You only get one life in this game, so you can't treat it the way I usually like to treat video games. You know, reckless. <laughs> uh, this is an arcade game that was only released in Japan, so since we didn't get this game, I'll just steal the footage from YouTube. No. No, I'm not playing this game, and I'm not going to find a way to track it down, because it's probably super rare and expensive, and I have no money, so yeah. Actually, Alex, I got some bad news for you. So. Turns out they released it in Title Legends 2. Yeah.
Well, it was released for the PS2 and Xbox in North America. Too bad we live in Arizona and not North America! Yeah, you dumb son of a bitch. And you know what, we don't even have the money to get it anyways. I already ordered it off eBay. Well, too bad it won't get here in time for the review. Then just emulate it. Hey, that's a great idea. That's a horrible idea! Who uses emulators anyways? Bringing us back to the Super Nintendo, Pocky and Rocky wasn't actually developed by Taito. Yeah, I know, I lied to you. Uh, try to try to trust me from now on, I dare you. Uh, it was done by the Harvest Moon loving Natsume. Uh, they developed and produced the game while Taito distributed the title to Northern Shore. Yoshihino Hattori, that's how I'm pronouncing it, live with it, deal with it, put it in paper, seal it up, and that's how it's gonna go, took the reins for the console debut of the series and used heavy influence from the Japanese mythology. This sequel to the original Japanese arcade introduced us to Rocky for the first time as an optional character slash second player. His design was brought to us by Tomoyuki Ishimafuriapla. I honestly don't know why they thought a raccoon would be such a great idea as a companion character. I mean, who really does that? Quick note on Paki before we continue. Her real name, and by her real name I mean her Japanese name, is Sayo-chan. Rocky was originally called Manuke, but Rocky is a much more fitting raccoon name, in my super flawless opinion. There were two other follow-up games. Pocky and Rocky 2, also released for the Super Nintendo, Pocky and Rocky with Becky, is the final installment released on the Game Boy Advance some years later. A spiritual successor later came out entitled Heavenly Guardian, due to a bunch of weird legal issue crap I don't want to even get involved in. It went from basically becoming the fifth installment to the series to a standalone game. It's kind of whatever. This essentially meant that Pocky and Rocky series had reached its end. This is kind of a long story, so you know I'm just gonna avoid getting into it. Now, I don't own any of the other games from the Kiki Kai Kai series, except for Pocky and Rocky, so I can't really turn this review into a retrospective on the entire series without owning them. Which is the main reason why I'm not going into such detail on its follow-up games. One day, perhaps, but until I own them, I'm just not going to touch it. Wow. So much history to one game. Ah. <sighs> I guess I should wrap this up with my opinion on the game. I like it. A lot. This game is quick and fun, the story is silly, and I'm sure there's more going on in the rest of the series to flesh it out more, but... Stories don't fix my opinion on a game. I'm taking this game for base value alone. Pocky and Rocky for the Super Nintendo is fun, exciting, and a great two-player experience. I undoubtedly recommend you check it out. I'm sure it's on the virtual market. If not, then just go buy a Super Nintendo and track this gem down. It's not too expensive if you look in the right places. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta get out there and try to track down the rest of the games in this awesome series. Come, Scooter. We have work to do. <laughs> Oh well, let's let game chase and go.